So I've got a bit of a cool one here today. So I'm playing some more of this hy uh, hybrid consume from uh, the Gwentman Spotlight uh, Snapchat, uh, the snapshot rather. And I'm going up against another hybrid consume. Pretty interesting mirror match. He has some slight changes to his deck that I'll mention here in a minute. Uh, so I start off with my Arachnus Moth because uh, I know I'm going to be getting consumes off with two Vran Warriors and two uh, Harpies. You could play the Harpies first, but I think Behemoth is just a little bit better. It's a little bit higher tempo. Um, and it kind of gets that, that come up piece out of the way. So he's playing the variant. Uh, he's he's playing the pretty much the exact variant of Snapshot. I actually took out Roach. Roach is, he's playing Roach. And I took out Roach uh, because I felt like it just kind of muddied up your draws a little bit too much. If you can get... If you manage to get like a clean hand without Foglet, Roach, or your Neckers, then yeah, you got a great you got a great play here. But generally speaking, I think it's a little bit it's asking for a little bit too much, and it makes the deck just a little bit more consistent, even if it does lower the power by a little bit. But he manages to get it off. It's a huge tempo swing. Now I went first, right? And this is I'm actually going to buck the trend of. Uh, making sure I pass my opponent on points because I can't really play to that. If I play to that, I'm just going to lose the entire round and I'll still probably be uh, lose on equal cards or go one card down or two cards down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to try and pass him. I'm instead going to focus on getting my combos off and getting all the value I can out of him. And also note that even though I do have a weather clear, I don't use it, even if it's on a very high priority target that I have. And I set up my Harpy, so I can set up my Vran Warrior the next turn. And then after this next play is pretty much where I've just about resigned to lose. Because before for some reason he actually he for some reason like copies the exact comp the exact uh card combination for the woodland spirit, which I think is less good, but then he uses the card like um uh Skellige Storm. So I pretty much feel like I've lost by this point. I lost both my eggs, which is n terrible. I've gotten basically no um no value on my Behemoth. Uh things are looking really bleak. So I go ahead and go for the, the weather clear. I could wait for one more weather, but I think it's really unnecessary. I think it's a little bit too greedy. So I just go ahead and get rid of it now. I also take care of his Foglet, which is a pretty okay tempo swing for me. So he plays out his next weather. It's kind of debatable whether or not I should have waited for that third weather. But I think since he was in the position of power, there was really no reason for him to go out of his way to use a third weather. And also that just incentivizes me to use my mage, which in monsters using the mage is very popular. And just by the way, the mage card is the three strength guy that has a uh, clear skies. So he plops down his weather, but that's fine. And I'm just, uh, I'm pretty sure I played the harpies next. So again, I'm not really playing to, conventional stand means and this actually may be wrong in the higher tier play this actually could be very wrong but in a certain instance i feel like it's correct because i'm getting value out of my cards even if i am uh behind and it just kind of it's like it's, it's really important like winning one round just gives you so much control over the rest of the game and that's kind of what I'm going for. And he goes for his own Behemoth because he's going to start setting up his combo. So now I, I'm pretty sure he's not going to want to get out of the round. Also, uh, because of the fact that he has weather. He feels like he can outvalue me and still win the round and get control of the game. Which, I mean, he does, but you'll see that later. Also, it's really important. Like, I also really want to play out this round because I want to get these uh, Harpies out of my... Or Harpies spawn or whatever they are out of my deck as much as possible and this entire time i'm just looking for like a really good opportunity to get out of this round and a really good opportunity would be uh after i played my fog after i played my carryover and after i played my spy maybe and obviously i can't use gravekeeper because there's like nothing in the graveyard nothing useful in the graveyard not yet anyway I'm pretty sure I go for the second Van Warrior, so I can just, uh, no, okay, I go for the weather. Now, there's two options here. Uh, I could go for fogging this back row, or there's actually three options. Fogging this back row, fogging any other row to get in, get immediate value because uh, this fog didn't hit the armor first, or I could go for like a freeze or rain on this melee row. Uh, I think all those options are okay, but since I only have one fog effect right now, 
I instead opt to use fog to get the fog out of my deck. But I could, I could, if you had a woodland spirit in your hand, I could totally see going for frost or rain on this melee road to shut down some of that uh, consumed synergy. Also, I'm just putting the fog on the back row. Even if it doesn't get immediate value, because if this round goes really long, he'll get less hits off with his uh, consumes. He'll get less um, behemoths, or he'll get less uh, rachni. There's the drowner, very popular in that deck. I go ahead and play my second Vran Warrior, start getting more of those eggs out, or uh, consumed. And all the while, this is buffing up my Neckers that are in my deck, which I'm going to be seeing the benefit of, <clears throat> excuse me, the benefit of later, in later rounds. Alright, so now that his uh, Rackness Behemoth is at 6, I go ahead and play the K-Run. And this entire game, I've been, uh, this entire round, I've been looking for opportunities to use K-Run in a very good fashion. And this is, like, the most optimal. I didn't necessarily set up fog so I could use K Ram, but it just happened to work out pretty nicely. <clears throat> pretty nicely. And even though K Ram is not, I don't think K Ram is all that great. I think it, that was like a what? It was six away from him, six plus to me, plus four, uh, 12, six. It's like 16. Uh, 16 skull strength is pretty good. Um, but more so, it, it helps to take away one of his key units, I think. And like, this is. Like, this is the very best I think you can get with k -Ren, hitting on a, a key target and it being 6 uh, power. And I set up my k -Ren to be eaten by the Vran, not, uh, so I can have uh, an extra point of uh, power on the Necker in the later round. Plays out more Harpies. And I'm pretty much about to give up on this round. Yeah, because if I play... So by this point, now I really don't want to get to the point where I'm going two cards down because when you get when you whittle down your, your the, the cards in your hand down to fewer and fewer cards, card advantage becomes much more important. So this by this point, I'm also he has all these eggs that he's ready to start feeding on. So I'm just going to give up the round by this point. He's invested a lot of low tempo plays and I don't have any high tempo plays. So now it's time to give up. I'm looking to uh, do a quick check to see if there's anything worth taking in this graveyard. And there's not. Playing out Golem is not good, because if I play out Golem, I don't pass his strength. He gets feeding synergy off, and then I have to use a Grave Keeper just to try and uh, make that play worth it, and it's not. Also, I take away Rain Warrior from hitting this egg. Uh, I didn't actually... <laughs> what's funny is I didn't actually cognizantly... Uh, I wasn't particularly aware of which unit I picked, I think, at the moment. I just kind of subconsciously went to the Rain Warrior, because I know pulling Rain Warrior, one, because it has a high strength, and I threaten... Um, uh, Igni score or Igni and Marigold Tollstorm, but also taking uh, Vrand, moving Vrand is very good because usually you move them out of their way to not either not consume or not hit a, a priority target like an egg. It would have been great if he played another card here, but he definitely does not. I, I'm pretty sure he was contemplating playing something like a uh, Ekimara or something like that, just in case I have like a Marigold Tol Hair Tol Hair Hail Storm or something. But the point difference is just too much. And I lose going same cards, which is not very good, but I did go first. And I was at a pretty dire situation to begin with. I was I kind of lucked out, and I don't know if this is just uh, from playing basically just in the casual matches. Uh, but it's possible that a better player would have passed, <clears throat> excuse me, would have passed a lot earlier. Uh, like when they could have gone two cards up, but I'm not really sure. <clears throat> so by this point uh he's gonna play his first card um even if he didn't play his first card i still had uh, the carryover so it's fine so he plays his second card and i need to pass his uh pass his strength total this time because uh usually in uh, the early rounds uh in the early rounds of round <laughs> in the early turns of round two the opponent is always looking for a way to pass with a, with an additional advantage. So you want to try and take away that additional advantage as much as you can. And luckily, he has a harp in the graveyard that I can take and uh, get some combo synergy off with. So I make sure to pass the strength total. Grab the harpy. Because that's carryover and synergy with my other stuff. I need a little bit of a bonus. I get a harpy out of my deck. 
he wants to use the red warrior and these eggs. He might have wanted to pass there so he can just pass those uh, harpy spawn over to the next round, but he wants to get that synergy off because I, I feel like that was probably a mistake because he doesn't have any neckers in his hand. Um, and if you don't have any neckers in your hand, it's not really all that worth it to start getting consumed value by this point. Whereas I have a necker in my hand that I'm going to be playing, so it's it's totally worth it to go for it. <clears throat> so by this point, I'm just looking to drop my carryover and then use my uh, save my five uh, my catacan for last because that's a, a high tempo play that doesn't really have any other uh, use besides being a high tempo play. And he plays out an Arachnus Behemoth, which I think was also maybe a mistake. I think he was just trying to get his caretaker uh, value off wherever he could, um, but he's not actually going to get very much out of the Behemoth here. So I think he's going to get a max of like two, uh, two Arachne. Oh no, he has a second Ren Warrior. Never mind. So that was pretty good. Never mind. So I guess he just wanted to shut me out of the round here with all of his Ren Warriors and Arachnus Behemoth that he planned from the beginning. And he's just going to play with his last card to try and force me out of the round. Or for uh, either win the round or force me to play my last card. Uh, but the thing is, because I have uh, the Necker, it was pretty much uh, spelled out Doom for him. Yeah, there's really the only way he could win this game by this point. So he went all in on. Uh, OK, so he went all in on the strategy that he needs to win round two, because if we go to round three. I still have a, a 10 or 11 strength Necker that's going to be coming out for free. And I still have one more card, whereas he had just no board and one card. So that was pretty much his strategy. I don't know. Uh, actually, kind of at the end of this game, I want to go back and look and see if he maybe switched the strategy once he saw the Necker. And then he was like, you know what? I had to go on this round. I had to go all in on this round. And then this comes out to be really close. I think maybe he went for the right decision, uh, regardless of whether or not I played a Necker, because you can kind of assume that I would. You would assume that in round two, you would have at least one Necker to play. And so he just went for the what he thought was or what he because I don't want to say it like der it's derogatory, like, oh, you thought you thought it's not like that. And he went for the play, the this course of action that he thought was the highest CV, which I also would probably agree with. As you can see, the, the point difference is incredibly minor if i just messed up my consume here or i did things in the wrong order i would have gone my, like minus one point and would have lost and then my necker synergy would have made, meant for much because it's only uh i spent all this time consuming and i only have a 11 strength bronze to show for it yeah so i think uh my my mechanics there are kind of like really shown because i use so much my rand warrior uh at such a aggressive pace that I had such a big necker in round two and then in here in round three. Really, no matter what he plays, I just win. Even if I didn't have Woodland Spirit, I probably still would have won. I think the only way he could possibly could have won this is if, is if I didn't have Woodland Spirit and if he had something like a, a necker into an Ekimar or something like that or a Uh Let's go back and let's go back to this round two. So I played out this Necker pretty early, it looks like. What was his last play before this? Okay, so I play my Vran Warrior. I'm pretty much committing to the round. So by this point, does he pass? Does he pass here? We know he has a Vran Warrior. We know he has a Caretaker. But he has no Necker. I wonder if he doesn't play Neckers in this deck or if he just got an unlucky. Because you would always keep at least one Necker going into round two. Hmm. Especially if you don't have uh, Unseen Elder. So he has a good idea that I pretty much committed to this round, but I haven't played Necker yet. And if you're going up against Hyper Consume, I think you pretty safely assume. Okay, so he's he's committing to this round even though I haven't played Necker yet. So let's say he let's say he thinks I don't have Necker. Playing at this round is entirely correct, right? Uh 
If I don't have Necker playing out is entirely correct. Yes. Wait, yes? Yeah, because if he doesn't have Necker, then it's possible that they have a way to consume it multiple times in the next round. But it it's it's weird. It's kind of like he's locked out of the way. Because if he doesn't, if, if I don't have Necker, then you have to play it out because you don't want to give me opportunities to try and uh, double combo the Necker in round three and get massive tempo off just a couple cards. Because once you consume the Necker, it comes right back out. But then if I do have Necker, you have to play it out because you don't want me to... Uh, because you can't beat down that Necker power in round three. Because at the very least, it's like a free 10 bronze on the field for nothing. So he he heavy commits to this round by playing Behemoth. Maybe that's just all the options. No, he, surely, I, surely I had Harpies in my, de uh, my graveyard. He could have played that instead. But he went hard for... Uh, he's going all in on round two to try and two around me. I think I probably would have done the same, honestly. And then by the time I play this uh, this Necker, he he has to play it out. Or lock the Necker somehow and then pass. And he doesn't. Yeah. Interesting game. So I went from being at like absolute despair, like getting hit with uh, fought the Woodland Spirit, which was like 19 strength right away. And then he broke my eggs with Skellige Storm. I was able to clear that weather and then kind of salvage the round uh, by... Basically, just focusing on my own synergies and hoping he doesn't pass on me. Even if I did go two cards down, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, I did go first. I wrestled, <clears throat> I wrestled control of the game, especially with so many cards uh, at the time. And then I can, you know, use my own tactics and strategy to try and turn that advantage around in round two and three. And then going into rounds two and three, I just had, I think, just simply superior cards, like having my Necker and having. Uh, Woodland Spirit round three, which doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. And then I had Catacan, and I still had some carryover with Rock Golem. Uh, admittedly, uh, admittedly, if things had gone a little bit differently, I would have been two rounded there, but interesting nonetheless. And also, funnily enough, he got 12 strength off of this Arachnus Behemoth. I kind of thought it was a mistake at the time, but interesting game. Very, very cool. Just kind of shows you like the resilience of this uh, hybrid consumed deck. I went from completely losing to being able to win it outright, which is fun. Good stuff. Thanks for watching.